iPhones. They seem to be viewed very favorably amongst people who just started learning about online privacy and cybersecurity. Now it is true that by default, iPhones are a lot less spooky than default Android devices. Apple has taken great measures to reduce the amount of data that third-party apps can collect from you with app tracking transparency. They've outright refused requests by law enforcement to decrypt iPhones that belonged to known terrorists. And as a company, Apple's profit model doesn't so much depend on data collection in order to do targeted advertisements as much as Google does. And on the security front, Android is kind of a shit show compared to iOS. And the main reason for this is the fact that different phone manufacturers create their own versions of Android and then load them onto their phones. And they're generally much slower to release security fixes for those modified Android OSs. It's not unusual to see companies like Samsung or Sony go weeks or even months without adding hot fixes for known security problems to their Android versions. But of course, all of this applies to stock Android and stock iOS. Many Android phones allow you to load a custom ROM onto them like Graphene OS or Calyx OS, both of which I would consider to be much more private and with Graphene OS especially, much more secure than any stock Android ROM. And of course with iPhones, just like all of Apple's products, you aren't allowed to change much of anything. So no custom ROMs coming to Apple devices anytime soon. Now, despite stock iOS being much more appealing than stock Android, there is a serious security flaw that was discovered within the last few iPhones that could potentially make them vulnerable to malware attacks, even when the device is powered off. The issue was discovered when security researchers did an analysis of the Find My function in iOS. So Find My is one of the many features of iPhones that can make them much more appealing to consumers because the function can be used to find their iOS devices. And due to the fact that so many people around the world have iPhones, Apple has been able to create a sort of a Find My mesh network for things like AirPods or anything that an Apple tag is attached to. As soon as one of those devices comes within range of an iPhone, its location is going to be reported and the owner of that item can then go and see its last known location and probably track it down and get it back. Now, what makes Find My so effective is the fact that it still works even when an iOS device is powered off. The Bluetooth, near field communication, and ultra wideband all continue to function when iOS is shut down. And all three of these wireless chips have access to the secure element inside of iOS devices. This is the same functionality that allows for using things like express cards when the phone is in power reserve mode. That's right. These radios staying on and functional when iOS is powered down lets you still use your iPhone for things like payments, even when the battery is run out. And this is why I've been asking you guys to seriously think about this. When you turn your phone off, how do you really know that it's off? When you remove the SIM card, how do you know that you're no longer connected to cell towers? Well, actually, with that one, I could just tell you straight up that your SIM card has nothing to do with being able to connect to cell towers. They basically just let you use your phone for non-emergency services. You can still call 911 or whatever the code for emergency services is in your region when the SIM card is taken out and when the phone is in airplane mode. So that's a perfect example of these buttons that claim to turn things off, not doing what most people think they are doing. Now, the most disturbing of these three wireless radios being left on with the newer iPhones has got to be Bluetooth. In case you didn't know, Bluetooth is a very insecure protocol, probably the least secure network protocol 
that people use in current year. And part of it has to do with the fact that it's often used for low security applications, okay? Think about the types of things you use Bluetooth for, like connecting to a wireless speaker, maybe you use it to connect to some headphones, and if you had to enter a password every single time you connected to a Bluetooth device, then it just wouldn't be very convenient. And to make things even worse, the Bluetooth firmware that's running on these iOS devices is not signed or encrypted which means an adversary with privileged access to an iOS device can create malware that's capable of being executed on that Bluetooth chip, again, even when your phone is powered off. And because Apple made the daring decision to remove the headphone jack from their phones starting in 2016 with the iPhone 7, and then of course, all the other phone manufacturers went ahead and copied Apple like they always do. Every phone manufacturer under the sun wants to be Apple for some reason, uh, probably because of how much money they make as a company. <laughs> uh, but more and more people are practically being forced to use this insecure Bluetooth technology, right? The age of the wired headphones has basically gone extinct along with the Dodo Bird. Now, luckily, this particular Bluetooth exploit that has been found in the newer iOS devices is pretty difficult to pull off, okay? You don't have to worry about some random script kitty hacking your Bluetooth firmware and then having a constantly persistent backdoor running in your device that is enabled even before iOS goes on. Uh, because in order to do it, it would require a hacker to access and modify the firmware via the operating system, which is something that you're not supposed to be able to do on Apple devices. On the flip side though, because this stuff is all implemented in hardware, it cannot be updated and patched with an iOS update. So it's going to be there on your device for as long as you have it. And unless Apple decides to change these things on a newer iPhone, then it's going to continue being there until you go ahead and get that new one that may or may not be updated. So what steps could you reasonably take to protect yourself from something like this? Well, anti-RF bags, that's really the only real solution because they completely prevent any wireless signal from reaching a device that is inside of one. And I think that that's the best way to handle this until maybe Apple adds a radio kill switch to their iPhones, which would just let you cut the power to all of the antennas, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, etc. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. I don't think your average iOS fanboy really cares about privacy that much to actually want a hardware kill switch on their phone. But just keep in mind with these anti-RF bags or Faraday bags, or even if you decide to go and make your own with some tin foil, if your phone is still on inside of one of these bags, then it's going to start using up your battery quicker and it might also run hotter because your phone is going to automatically boost the signal of all of its radios, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc., to attempt to make a connection. To the outside world. So turn your phone off, or <laughs> at least as off as it can be, before you put it in a Faraday bag. But that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.